Minecraft has been around for over a decade now, and that's given Notch and the gang over at Mojang plenty of time to put in a bunch of hidden features or easter eggs into the game. Today, we'll be looking at the history of Minecraft's easter eggs, some minor, some completely unknown, and others changing the face of the craft as we know it. This is Minecraft's history of easter eggs. I hope you enjoy. Back in November of 2011, when Minecraft 1.0 just released, it was already packed with hidden features. One of the first easter eggs ever was the title of the game itself. The Minecraft title screen had a 0.01% or 1 in 10,000 chance to say Minsraft instead of Minecraft. The saddest part is the fact that this has probably happened to most of us and we just completely missed it. In May, rumors began spreading about a certain blank-eyed Steve that would pop up in your Minecraft world, dig random 2x2 tunnels, and build pyramids. Of course, Notch had to address the issue of his dead brother haunting his game, and calm people down by secretly removing Herobrine in every update since. That is, until recently. The Minecraft disc titled 11 was Minecraft's 11th disc, and was 1 minute 11 seconds and 111 milliseconds long. Putting it through a spectrogram revealed a distorted Steve face, as well as C418, the creator's autograph. The April Fool's Day update for 2011 introduced a locked chest, that when opened prompted the player to buy a Steve Co. and Supply crate key. Following the instructions to the Minecraft store opened a whole other can of worms. Clicking the proceed to checkout button triggered a screaming Velociraptor from Jurassic Park, which would fly across your screen and yell at you, probably for trying to buy a Steve Cohen supply crate key, in which case that's justified. Not only that, if you proceed to check out with more than $10,000 worth of cool Minecraft collectibles, you would be greeted with a seizure warning followed by an epileptic light session for your viewing pleasure. Thanks Mojang, way to reward your best customers. Enchanting was also added in Minecraft 1.0, and while the symbols may look like complete gibberish, they're actually real decipherable characters, referencing the Commander Keen game franchise. Although, don't get your hopes up since once they're decoded, they're sadly just utter nonsense. Somewhere around May of 2012, a whole bunch of new splash texts were added. One of them read, This message will never appear on the splash screen. Isn't that weird? And true to its name, it is the only message programmed not to show. It just sits idly in the game files to this day. On September 6th, the final painting was added to Minecraft. And did you know they actually have lore? Like, look at this one, can you figure out what it is? Is it a desert with cacti? A salad? The inevitable arrival of death? No, it's actually a man wearing a fez in Albania. Yeah, who would have guessed? On Halloween, mobs in the nether now had a chance to spawn with pumpkins on their heads. And on Christmas, chests were retextured to be more festive. A skis file was also added to the code by Dinnerbone, but only as a red herring and not as an actual feature. On July 1st of 2013, Dinnerbone decided he wanted every mob with his name to be upside down. And to this day, changing a name tag to read Dinnerbone and applying it to nearly any mob in Minecraft will do just that. Now when your game crashed, it wouldn't leave you feeling confused, it'd leave you feeling confused and stupid, providing a crash report that, let's be honest, nobody understood. Also included within the crash report was a witty little remark, like who set us up the TNT, oops, or my personal favorite, would you like a cupcake? A reference to the hip pop culture trend at the time, Girl Scouts? Ah, nothing like some baked goods to ease my mind from this block game crashing for reasons I can't hope to comprehend. On October 23rd, added to the Xbox Legacy Console Edition was a pillar of four gold blocks which spawned on an obsidian block in the middle of a desert temple in the tutorial world. Any guesses to its name? Well, this temporary structure was appropriately named the Tower of Pimps. Following Dinner Bone, Jeb also decided he wanted a mob easter egg named after him, and since that day, naming a sheep Jeb underscore would cause it to cycle through every single wool color in the rainbow. On June 6th of 2014, player XYZen420 contacted Ryan Holtz, a developer at Mojang, to request the addition of his girlfriend's lost pet rabbit Toast into Minecraft. Holtz kindly agreed to the request, 
and naming Rabbit Toast now unlocks a hidden skin as a wholesome memorial. Likewise, in Spyro Monty Python, summoning a rabbit of type 99 would summon the Killer Bunny, which not only would kill you with cuteness, but with violence. Holy, that is a lot of damage! On September 2nd, Minecraft's female protagonist, Alex, was introduced. Her skin had a secret, however. It contained a bunch of transparent pixels that when changing the opacity to 100% revealed a bit of Steve's clothing, as well as a pair of glasses. On May 22nd of 2015, Notch sadly left Mojang, but just in time added another secret splash text, Notch Heart Easy, which was promptly removed the next day. Absolute savage, though. On April Fools, when 1.9 was supposed to release, the Love and Hugs update came instead, making me realize just how sad and lonely I really am. The update was full of a ton of hidden features. You can now craft obsidian boats that always sink, throw potions of sharing and caring that would cause mobs to drop random items, Squids can now fly, you can fill up your love meter to play a Minecraft version of Minesweeper called Minescreeper, all particles are replaced with hearts, lava is now liquid cheese and can't hurt you, and so much more nonsense. One more notable feature was that upon opening a super flat world, the snowfall would generate a QR code around 00, that when scanned would reveal to you the actual name of 1.9, the combat update. Yuck. On October 14th, the splash text 0% sugar was secretly changed to read 1% sugar. Why? I have no clue. 2% coming soon? Y you hear that? That's the new cave sound 14 that was just added. Or as I like to call it, the makes me piss my pants noise 14th edition. Which when taken through a spectrogram reveals a distorted creeper face. Spooky. Did you know Jeb is a simp? Yeah, polar bears were added because his wife liked them. My life is a lie. Also, this was coincidentally around the time that Jeb's son Bjorn was born. Bjorn meaning bear in Swedish. This year's April Fool's update was the trendy update. The update introduced USB charger blocks that emit redstone, ankle monitors that can't be taken off in survival, reality vision so you can escape the real life that is Minecraft, a smartwatch, and a revamped sign texture. A more little known fact is that this update also secretly hinted at the rise of famous YouTuber George Not Found in a few years' time. On September 8th, the Evoker was added, with the secret ability to change blue sheep red, while making a cool little sound, a reference to the game Age of Empires. Illagers named Johnny with a name tag now try to kill any peaceful mob around them, a reference to the 1980 thriller movie The Shining. Typing Excited ZE, the IGN of a former Mojang employee, into the recipe book changes the language to pirate speak which leads to many funny item translations. Prior to the release of 1.13 in January of 2018, typing slash help into a command block would result in various joke responses appearing in the response terminal, and typing sarge into a command block would return hashtag it's lipo futsly. I completely said that wrong, but I have no idea how to say it. The banner pattern thing was added with a rather strange and seemingly random name. It begins to make more sense, however, when you see it's actually old Mojang logo. Mojang being a Swedish word that means gadget or thing. The April Fool's update for 2019 was the 3D update. The devs joked about it being a secret copy of Minecraft from 1990. It's full of old-fashioned imagery, flaming barrels that explode when you take items out of them, a really horrendous and yet charming GUI, and references to many 90s games, particularly Doom. Until April 23rd, or the texture update, you could find watermarks in several mob textures. In unused areas of the two Guardian textures, for example, you can find Jeb's name. In armor stands, you can find Sarge and Jappa's names, and in Pigman, rest in peace, you can find the words Thanks Zephobia, which is Notch thanking the player Zephobia for suggesting the idea of the zombie Pigman in the first place. You will not be forgotten. To celebrate Minecraft's 10th birthday, on May 17th, 2019, all cakes would have the number 10 above them. 
Before June 14th, when the updated launcher released, there were tons of hidden easter eggs in the old one. Hover over the play button for a while and a random mob would pop up in the bottom right. The top left had a transparent creeper face that had a 1 in 11 chance of being a shrug emoticon instead, and pressing Ctrl plus B would play the experience or pickup sound. To spread awareness of <laughs> a certain pandemic going around, a bunch of new splash texts were added containing helpful messages, like reminders to wash your hands and take care of your elders. Most of the audio samples for the Crimson Forest Nether Biome were actually made with balloons. Can you hear it? The sound engineers thought that the compression of something leading into its unwilling reinflation was a creepy process, and when they phrase it like that I would have to agree. 2020's April Fool's update was perhaps one of the best ones ever. The Infinity Update. The Infinity Update added exactly what its name suggests. Infinite Dimensions. You could sign a book, throw it into a portal, and bam, a new dimension was made. This is Dimension Weefies, for example. It crashes your game. <laughs> Fitting. There are tons of easter egg dimension this update, namely Ant, Content, Colors, Message, Missing, Fleet, Sponge, Secret Message, Terminal, and holy crap, so many more. In July and September of 2020, seeds for pack.png, the default resource pack icon, the Minecraft title screen world, and the seed of this frickin' painting background were all found by the Minecraft at Home project. Super duper impressive. And just recently, in February of 2021, the same project also discovered this. A 23 block tall, naturally generating cactus. That's crazy. And that pretty much covers almost all the easter eggs in Minecraft. I say almost because the coolest thing about all of this is that there could still be other easter eggs out there that haven't been discovered yet. Just like the three $15 Amazon gift card codes I've hidden throughout this video. Hope you enjoyed, thanks so much for watching, and please consider subscribing. Discs in Minecraft have always been a source of controversy. Whether the argument is regarding their comparison to the value of Tubbo, or the question of why Mumbo Jumbo insists to only use Chirp as the background song in his psychedelic time lapses. But one mystery looms over them all. In a game seemingly intended for young audiences, why does there exist a piece of nightmare fuel that is the horrifying Disc 11? And more interestingly, what unknown secrets about the game do its mysteries hold? Music discs have been in Minecraft forever. The first ones were added in the alpha versions, and the rest added later in beta. Even more recently though, the 13th music disc, Pig Step, was added as tribute to the 1.16 nether update. But one disc stands out. Even visually, if I asked you to pick out which disc looks different from the rest, assuming you didn't choose Pig Step, the obvious choice would be 11. While all the other discs have this somewhat colorful and complete appearance, with the exception of maybe Stal, 11 is ruined. Its edges are battered, a piece of it is missing, and its center is pitch black. Not to mention its cryptic name and even more horrifying audio. And this begs the question, why does this disc exist, and what is it telling us about the nature of Minecraft? Since its addition, there have been many, many speculations as to what secrets Disc 11 holds. Theories about its haunting characteristics. Some believe it tells a story about Herobrine, while others speculate it's tied to the Warden, the new 1.17 mob. But which is it actually? The disc must have a story, so what side is correct? Why does such a terrifying track exist in a children's game? 
and what is the true meaning of the disc. After hours of research and speculation, I have drawn a conclusion that I don't think anybody's drawn before, and I think we might have just solved it. This is my take on the unsolved mystery of Minecraft's Haunted Disc 11. To analyze Disc 11, we first have to understand what about its audio makes it so special. Well, let me tell you, you'll notice right away. Let me play you a bit of two random discs and a bit of Disc 11 and maybe you can pick out a few differences. Well, that sure was... something. It isn't even music. While most of the discs in Minecraft are relatively cheery, retro tracks, with the exception of maybe Pigstep and 13, the latter of which we'll cover later, Disc 11 is nothing of the sort. It's filled with creepy ambience, unnerving audio, and most importantly, seems to tell a story. To get a better idea of what's going on, let's quickly draw a timeline of the disc with all of the important focal points. The disc starts off with a bit of static and ambience, followed by heavy and ragged breathing. This is accompanied by quick footsteps on what sounds to be stone. The supposed running terminates around 11 seconds in, but the heavy breathing continues. We then hear some rustling, followed by a metallic clicking, then silence, only broken by a strong cough another 11 seconds later. Now we hear the sound of stiff paper or parchment being turned or handled. We then get another clicking sound before the ambience in the background intensifies, and we again hear heavy breathing and quick pattering footsteps. The running transitions from a stone surface to what sounds like dirt or gravel, followed by a loud distorted screeching noise, and then complete silence and static. Ending at exactly 1 minute, 11 seconds, 111 milliseconds. Nice. The rough roadmap is now here, but there are still many questions left unanswered. Namely the who, what, where, and why. The where is the easiest part. We can say with confidence that Disc 11 takes place in a cave. The creepy ambience heard at the beginning, coupled with the block choice, stone, and dirt or gravel, suggests that someone, or something, running in a cave is the most likely option. It's also important to consider when Disc 11 first came out. The disc was officially released in the Beta 1.9 pre-release, but its audio files were added as early as August 2010, in alpha version 1.0.16, even if I can't verify this. At the time, Minecraft was far simpler, and caves are really the only location that makes sense for the context. Now that we have a rough idea of the where, let's move on to the what. There are many notable aspects of Eleven, so let's go in order. The first is the rustling, followed by a metallic clicking sound. This can be assumed to be whatever the character in the disc is, rummaging in their belongings and pulling out a metal tool. The nature of this metal tool is a bit ambiguous. 
At the time, only three metallic objects existed in Minecraft, which were the clock, compass, and flint and steel. If the sound file was really added as early as August 2010, compasses and clocks which were added later in alpha would not be possible candidates. As such, the only plausible metallic tool that could be used is a flint and steel, which has been in the game since indev. Our character could be using it to light up a fire or scare away monsters, but we'll cover more on the why later. The source of the paper-like rustling can be narrowed down by similar deduction. At the time, the only feasible paper objects in the game were maps, books, and, well, paper. Maps, as you may know, require a compass to craft, and not only that were added in Beta 1.6, well after the supposed addition of the disc's sound files in Alpha. As such, the character writing in a book or paper as some sort of journal seems to make the most sense. In his video on the subject, MatPat proposes the journal's nature is hinted at by the Mob Bestiary, and more recently, the Lost Journal's novel series. He claims that the protagonist of the disc could be keeping a journal that is the Mob Bestiary. That being said, the Bestiary was published in 2017, seven years after the sound edition of the disc. And in a game not as lore heavy as Minecraft, I would assume they don't plan out lore reveals seven years in the future but it is something to consider. Our mysterious character then supposedly senses something, as depicted by the increased ambience. They then begin to run faster and faster before finally running onto a dirty or gravelly material. And then, the screech. This is perhaps the largest and most highly debated mystery in Disc 11. What is making that haunting noise before the disc cuts off? To my knowledge, there are five prevailing theories. Herobrian, the character's dog, the warden, a scratch on the disc, or an enderman. Contrary to all the conflicting arguments, I do believe there is in fact a correct answer, but let's consider all the possible suspects. Herobrian is the easiest theory to dispel because there are just so many factors against it. Number one, Herobrian wasn't made by Mojang. I really don't think C418 would create a whole music disc about a rumor. Number two, Herobrine is just that, a rumor. Not to mention the first ever image of Herobrine, the catalyst behind the creepypasta, was posted from a version that came out a day after Eleven sound file was added, so no one even knew about Herobrine prior to the disc's release. The character's dog is another theory that is relatively easy to disprove. Officially, wolves were added to the game before 11. However, that was again only in beta. As we've mentioned many times, the sound files of Disc 11 were added nearly a whole year before the inclusion of dogs into the game. The second reason it probably isn't a distorted dog is that none of the wolves' sound files match the sound of the screech. The screech has a very distinct twin peak shape of pitches, like a swoop downwards and back up. Out of all the wolf sound files, none match the herd audio. The theory regarding the Warden is also fairly clean cut. Disc 11 wasn't inspired by the Warden, the Warden was inspired by Disc 11. One might think that since the Warden was added a whole 11 years after the sound files of the disc, there is no meaningful connection between the two. This is false, however. In an interview with Brandon Pierce, the gameplay developer mainly responsible for designing the Warden, Pierce says this when asked about a correlation. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, I've always been like very interested in sort of like the music discs from Minecraft, like uh, Disc 11 and Disc 13, and um, even though they're not necessarily related, I was definitely very inspired. I mean, even you know, back when I was a teenager, I was thinking like, you know, what what's the monster making that noise at the end of like Disc 11 or Disc 13? And um, again, while they're not necessarily related, uh, I was always just thinking of like, what could scary mob look like in Minecraft? To reiterate, Pierce designed the Warden based on what he thought the Disc in Levin Screech was. This explains some of the similarities between their sounds. So while the Warden definitely isn't the mob C418 had in mind when designing Disc 11, Whatever that mob is, is certainly what Pierce had in mind when designing the Warden. The scratch on the disc is hard to prove and disprove. Eleven's appearance is very clearly battered and damaged, a reference to the static portion of its audio. 
but is the screech because of the scratch, or is the scratch because of the screech? If they really are played in jukeboxes, discs in Minecraft are more like records. If you picture how a record plays, you have a needle that spins around the grooves going around and around, touching every point besides the exact center where it's positioned. All that's to say, excluding the center, disc 11 totals 114 pixels, and the broken part, 14 pixels. 14 divided by 114 is just over 12%, so 88% of the disc is whole. If you reference the audio file, the screech takes place around 62 seconds in. That's exactly 88% of the entire disc playing fine before it's mysteriously cut off. As if part of it was missing. Now, does that seem like just a coincidence to you? It probably is. The old model for disc 11 didn't have a missing piece until 1.14. Not to mention the way records actually play would make this song last a very short period of time if there was a chunk missing. This is just a cool coincidence. But that's not to say that its conclusion is incorrect. I believe that the screech indeed caused the scratch. In my opinion, something happened in the disc to make it crack, and we'll cover that soon. The sound also just seems far too aggressive to be a simple chunk missing although it definitely is up for interpretation. But that leaves us with only one theory. Enderman. And I think this is the correct one if not on the right track. Pun intended. Let me explain. Several contradictions are made to the Enderman theory, the main one being they were added too late. In a Tumblr post, Notch, the creator of Minecraft, talks about his plan to make the Enderman, a post that was published on July 2nd of 2011, exactly a year after the addition of Disc 11 sound files. But what these theorists didn't consider is the source of it all. Daniel Rosenfeld, C418, the creator of the discs himself. On September 29th, 2011, C418 tweeted this. After I take a bath I promise I'll finish Enderman sounds. This week has been filled with interruptions. Sad face. To which Notch replied, At C418, did you see the title even shows up when hovering the item in the inventory now? Smile. This is a bit of a strange reply, but it gets weirder and wilder. To this, C418 responds, At Notch. Yes. I now imagine C418 being a weird monster that occasionally records songs from strangers. And then dies in 11. And just to seal the nail on the coffin. At C418, haha yeah. That record was fun to draw. Winky smile. This thread is a gold mine. I now imagine C418 being a weird monster that occasionally records songs from strangers then dies in 11. Disc 11, whose story Notch had drawn out. So there is a story, and this is how it goes. It's my belief that an Enderman is recording Disc 11, and it dies in the process. Notice how the only places you can find discs in-game are places that are owned by mobs. Dungeons, mansions, bastions, and creepers shooting skeletons. No disc can be found elsewhere. C418, the creator of the discs, is a monster. Mobs. The creators of the discs, which follow players around trying to find their story. We know that according to C418, something dies in 11. A monster. And guess what the Enderman scream sounds like? <laughs> A twin peak of screeches, followed by its static death cry. Just like the screech and static ending of 11. Imagine a world where an Enderman lurks in the shadows, following a player it found in a cave, recording its sound the store in a disc. The player runs from it, hence the running and breathing, 
then light a fire with flint and steel for light, and documents his findings in a book, before getting back up to run away, finally stabbing the Enderman and fleeing somewhere else. This brutal attack causes our Enderman protagonist to screech and drop the disc it was recording, breaking it exactly when the sword struck 88% of the way in. There is so much more to build off of this, like the why. Well, we know that according to MatPat, the Illagers are trying to mimic life. From the totems of Undying to the fake structures, maybe they even commanded the mobs to get the discs as a way to create life that sounds like the player as well, to get songs from strangers. Think about it, why are none of the other discs damaged? It's because for Eleven, the Enderman tried recording a player. Only then did the stranger fight back, and hurt our recorder. Not to mention the connections to skeletons causing creepers to drop their discs. It's just like a charged creeper causing a skeleton to drop its head. Only mobs can take away what belongs to other mobs. Like the discs belong to the monsters. Now, I will be the first to admit that this theory is somewhat far-fetched. There are so many-